you name it, Mr. Charles Martin. Woo! -hoo! Hello, Mississippi. It's me, Super Mario. Doing number one, doing number one. Buffball. And Wario, ever of the day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait, I forgot. Mommy said, say something nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. And Waluigi, everybody keep it neat. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! I just have so much secondhand embarrassment from that intro. So you know when you're just like so happy, you just start making weird noises? You know, when I said that out loud, I think I'm about to be demonetized. Just help me answer this question. Why was the default sound coming out of my mouth? Woohoo! Like it didn't just come out once. It came out multiple times. And I'm sitting there in the front row with this icon of 30 plus years in front of me. Like, what am I trying to do? Impress the guy? Anyways, I I'm just ashamed. I'm sorry. Hello, all my Taku friends. My name is Prophet Taku, and welcome back to my channel for this very special video. Over the last two days, I attended my very first anime con, Mississippi Anime Festival in Jackson, Mississippi, and I got the full con experience, and it was just the most magical weekend of my entire life. From panels to Q&As, artist alley to getting signatures, it was just such a great weekend, and I loved every second of it. So we're going to go through my experience at the con through a collage of short clips. I'm going to voice over, show you guys kind of my game plan, my strategy, my personal thoughts on the whole convention. And then at the very end, I will leave a timestamp. If you want to jump right into it, we are going to go over the hall. A legendary, amazing hall. Such amazing stuff. I spent like one third of my tax returns. <laughs> but anyway, this is such a fun video. So let's get started. So it was just a beautiful Saturday in Jackson, Mississippi for the Anime Con. And I just want to talk to you guys through my experiences and kind of my game plan of how I approached my first con. The check-in was super easy. I got through in like five minutes. I was able to squeeze my way to the front of the pack because I knew that my number one goal was to get those signatures of the voice actors from Mario and Seto Kaiba. So thankfully when they opened the gates at 10, I was right at the front. Some people were telling me to go to Artist Alley first and I was like, nah, like I'm not going to do that. That. So I went straight to Charles. I goes fourth in line and it was so worth it because the line was like two hours long, like in like 30 minutes. So I was able to get some great pictures with Charles. Such a great guy. One of the nicest people I've ever met. Here I am in line for Eric Stort. I got him to sign something else as well that I'll show off later in the video. And then next up, I went through Artist Alley. So the big thing that my friends were telling me for my first con was to make sure that I was looking to get art prints because this is your chance to support local art and be able to get really unique stuff for the collection. So that was my number one goal. Found some really, really cool things. That black and white sketch shop looked really great. And then that chibi store, it was packed and I mean packed it was so cool to see this was probably my favorite store with all these like little figures and stuff I ended up picking up an acrylic stand from here that was super super cool and we have some figures here there were several figure stores and let me just say this huge huge red flags my friends were like do not buy figures here and I was like well I mean how bad could it be it was absolutely insane especially this figure store right here just stacks and stacks of figures and there are a couple that I really want there's a spy family one there is a bofuri nendroid i was like hey how much does this nendroid cost and usually it runs about 55 they're like yeah it's 100 i was like oh my goodness it's like highway robbery here so i did not pick up any figures i was so glad that i didn't you know it's just like i might as well just go ahead and buy that somewhere else i'm more going for the con experience looking for things that i couldn't normally get anywhere else where i don't have to pay for shipping and worry about damage there were several funko pop dealers as well obviously i'm not a big funko pop guy and there was some signed stuff and there's some rare stuff so that was cool to see there were also some comic book things here and i didn't explore this on the first day but i did explore it on the second day just to see if there was anything interesting that i could find so this next store here had a bunch of patches and magnets and I actually didn't explore this store because I wasn't necessarily interested but now I really am interested in those magnets so it was funny when looking back at these clips I was like oh I need to go see that again on the second day so <laughs> it was really really helpful. 
These next few clips are gonna show all the different prints I got from the art stores that I did buy from. And it was just really, really cool to see all these different unique art styles with some of my favorite characters. And there was some legit, really, really cool stuff. This was probably one of my favorite stores. They had some really interesting shading and colors with this stuff. So yeah, I was thoroughly impressed. Here is that chibi store with those tote bags, but they also had some prints here as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get some. <laughs> you know, the prints are actually not bad in terms of price wise. Most of the prints that I got ranged between 10 and 20 bucks. So for an 11 by 17 print, you don't gotta pay for shipping, well worth it. This store right here is kind of like a disc plate type of thing. So it's not a print, it's more like a glass type of thing. Really, really cool. I did end up buying something from here as well. Such high quality, but honestly, the most expensive thing that I bought at this con. Here's another store that I bought something from. These are all photo realistic, really, really cool. Lots of different characters. So that was an awesome store. And then here was the only place where I actually found some manga. No, I did not buy any because God knows I already have enough manga in my house. But <laughs> I did see the new Shonen Jump manga from the same creator as Hell's Paradise. I was definitely tempted, but I'm sure they were selling it for retail. I didn't want to bother. And then and here was one more store that I bought something from. I live in Los Angeles and Sarah's in Texas. So we actually met, what about you? A little bit, right? Ish. Ish. I can do, but I would be confident in knowing that is the best I can do. So it's not about competing against other people, it's about competing against myself. And that's really important in life. Life is way too short for you to go, man, what if I had just tried to draw that comic book? So like I said during the video, my goal was to get things that I couldn't pick up anywhere else or things that I thought would not really be good ship. That's what I did. We're gonna start from smallest to biggest. And first up was probably the cutest thing that I found at the Anime Con, and that is an acrylic stand of the Spy Family group, but as Team Rocket. <laughs> I just think this is absolutely adorable, not because they're Team Rocket, but because of the art style. It's not like in that official anime art style, it's in the art style of the actual artist, which is really, really cool. I can't wait to have this displayed. I mean, look at Anya's meow, that's adorable. Next up are some that I picked up and any artists that I have information on, I'll leave it down in the description if you're interested in checking out their other work. First up here is a five by seven print, the smallest print that I picked up, but it is a picture of All Might. I just love the vibe this gives off, like the total badassness, total comic book vibe. It's exactly why I picked it up. I think All Might as a character is super sick and this photo does his badassness justice. Next up are a set of three prints from Mimosa Studio and she was super, super sweet. These are eight by eights and they were only five bucks each. Each, and they're on like really quality cardstock, which is awesome, but they're of kitties. So this is the Inuyasha kitty. I haven't read Inuyasha, so like I just thought it was super cute, so I picked it up. And then next up, we have the little fox with all the tails, and look at his bow and the bell. <laughs> and then last up, the iconic Neko cat with the coin. I just love it so much. So yeah, all three of these prints really spoke to me. I'm super glad to have it. I just love cats and chibi style. <laughs> so let's go to the first autograph that I got from Eric Stewart, the voice actor of Seto Kaiba, and actually the director of the first three seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! and the first two seasons of GX. I did not know that. I found that out in the Q&A, which was super, super cool. But what I had him sign was my Yu-Gi-Oh! Omnibus. The only one was Seto Kaiba on it, and it says, To Dan, Eric Kaiba Stewart. Dan's obviously my name if you haven't figured that one out. So I don't own the anime physically, and I don't have a Blue Eyes White Dragon card, so this is kind of like the next best thing, but I'm so glad that I could get this iconic childhood hero in my collection. You know, his Q&A was super interesting, super inspirational. And what I loved most about it was him telling us all of the industry secrets, especially with what happened behind Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh with the casting and him as a director, some of the censorship laws that happened with Saturday morning cartoons in the early 2000s. Just super interesting, super down the earth, very confident guy. He knows what he's talking about about. He's a staple in the industry. So if you ever get a chance to meet him, highly recommend his Q&A. All right, we're back to prints now. And this is the print that broke my buying ban today. I had bought everything on Saturday. I was like, I am not buying anything else. I saw this and this artist was not there on Saturday. And I was like, oh my goodness, I just have to buy it. But this print comes from Shauna Color 
there, and that is Lum from Urusei Yatsura. I'm pretty sure it's Lum. Look, I've never watched the anime, so I don't know. But as you guys know, I'm a huge Rumiko Takahashi fan. I just completed my manga set for Urusei Yatsura, so I'm super excited to get started with this. But this just stuck out to me so much. Look at that hair. The hair is the coolest part of this thing, but I do love the white simplistic background. It's going to look great in a black frame. I love this chibi art style. In terms of just chibiness it's a different chibiness so <laughs> i love this thing i cannot wait to put this in the collection so this next medium sized print is the exact opposite of what i showed you guys it is so cool so dark so twisted an amazing character from an amazing anime that just got released last year and that is rebecca from cyberpunk edge runners i just love the spunk that this one gives off you know rebecca is just such a crazy character in the anime and it, she definitely shows it here but I just love the whole vibe that this is giving off. She's super cute, but she gives off this like really strong don't mess with me vibe. And I definitely vibe with that. So yeah, she's a great character. And maybe I got this for other reasons too. I just can't see it. <laughs> I'll definitely keep this one in the manga room so that the general public doesn't see it. They probably get a little bit alarmed. <laughs> All right, now we're on to the large print. And this is like the only photo realistic print that I got. But this one was so cool. I could could not pass it up it's one of my favorite series of 2022 and it is from tokyo revengers we have mikey and daddy oh sorry i meant draken i don't know what my deal is with delinquent characters that give off this vibe of don't mess with me but we have the same exact vibe here as rebecca but i just love the pose that they have and i also love the blurred background it's super super cool and it really makes the two characters pop super excited to have this one in my collection and I have something unique to support one of my favorite series the next print that I got is from one of my favorite animes of all time, and that is Steins Gate. This one is super, super cool. What I really enjoy about this is like the multi-dimensional time travel vibe that it gives off, which is exactly what this anime is about. <laughs> they have a bunch of quotes here with the clocks and the gears, which are like the main staple points of the anime. We have our two MCs. We have the desperation of our main character and then how everything centralizes around her. It's just such a unique piece. I love the minimalistic art style with the characters specifically, but I love this anime. I love this poster, and I really need to rewatch that anime sooner rather than later. All right, two more prints, and then the main signature that I got from this con. But first, we have this really amazing large print in a painting style of one of my favorite anime movies of all time, Spirited Away. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell, but it's in that painting style. So it's really, really cool. The artist actually painted it himself and then he made prints of all of them so it's really really unique to see i love the colors in here i love all the different easter eggs that you can find it's such an iconic image with all the iconic characters but i love this art style it gives me that watercolor vibe kind of like a monet type of thing but a little bit more defined so yes super super cool this is gonna look great in a frame i can see myself putting this in the living room i mean just looking at it now look at the tree detail i don't know if you guys can see that but that tree looks amazing so this last print was the most expensive print that i got at 60 dollars, but it was well worth it because it's made from that vinyl sheet not like just a piece of paper and here we are with an original character not from any anime or manga but it's the delinquent girl uh, you can, can you tell a theme here <laughs> but a delinquent girl in her biker jacket with the little devil mask on her and last but not least the highlight of my con fulfilling my childhood dream and i'm sure many of you yours too i got charles martinet to sign this beautiful art of mario so believe it or not i didn't get this piece at the con i found this at hobby lobby in the wall art section for 12 dollars. it is such high quality i just love the art style on it i love all the background stuff around here i was like i have to pick this up this would be something great for him to sign and just like i said in the video charles is the nicest man i have ever met he is so down to earth he is so humble and even during his Q&A somebody asked him what is the legacy that you want to leave behind and he was like the legacy I want to leave behind is that through Mario every person experienced joy optimism 
kindness, overcoming adversity, and just overall love towards other people. And that's the legacy I want to leave behind. And I was like, oh, this is so sweet. So when I went up there, he's like, do you have anything you want me to write? I was like, go write whatever you want. And he said, what's your name? Dan. He said, super Dan, superstar, your pal Mario with Charles' signature on there. And then with Mario here, it says, woohoo. And oh my goodness, it was just great. Between the pictures that I got that I'm going to frame and this, it was just worth every single penny to get that interaction with him and to just see one of your childhood dreams get fulfilled and be able to do it with the person that actually cares about you and cares about every single person that he talks to because he's just so glad and honored to even have the opportunity to voice Mario and all those other characters. So if Charles Martinet is anywhere close to you, I highly recommend making the trip. It will be well worth your time. And with that, my first con experience comes to an end from the beginning, getting there, exploring the whole con to also being able to present a panel at the con and be able to interact with all those guests. It was such a magical experience. The only thing that would have made it better is if I had friends that had tagged along with me. So maybe I should get more friends in real life. <laughs> but as always, if you enjoy my videos, please hit that like like button, tap the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you know when more of my videos come out and I will see you in the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.